Good morning, students. So today we are going to study about the state space analysis that is also known as modern control engineering. So basically, firstly, we are going to go with the advantages of state space analysis that why we are going for state space analysis when we have already discussed about time domain analysis and frequency domain analysis. So basically, the very first thing that is advantageous of modern control engineering of modern control engineering is that it can be applied to linear as well as non-linear control systems right so this very second advantage of our modern control engineering is that if the order of the equation is higher, even then with the use of matrices, it becomes easy to handle the higher order systems. Matrices makes the higher order system to be handled easily. And if you go back to your time domain analysis and frequency domain analysis, as the order of the system was becoming higher, so it was becoming difficult for us to uh, derive all the equations. So now we are going to come on to that how to draw various systems, various transfer functions, and what do we mean by state and space and state space and the various factors. So before going <clears throat> into the definitions of states and space and all thing, let's just discuss a very small example of electrical system so that it will become very easy for you to understand what state space analysis is. So if we just go back to our only equation writing of the electrical system, you can also always go for your this uh, Ohm's law that is your RIL because the current here is IL, right? This is our IL current that is flowing in the circuit. So it will be RIL plus it will be L DIL by DT plus the voltage across this capacitor is VC. So I am writing directly VC here equals to zero. That makes out to be the very first equation. And the second equation that we will get is our this IC that is also equal to IL will be equal to C dvc by dt so this is my second equation right so now keeping my these derivative terms on one side these two terms on one side and taking all other terms to the right hand side we are going to again write down the equations to get the matrix form of them so now as you can see here that when we are going to keep our this thing here taking this to this side and taking this to this side, these both will become minus and this L is going to go to that side and get divided in the denominator. Similarly, when we are talking about our equation number two, keeping this thing to one side and taking it towards that side, so it will become IL upon C. So this becomes our equation number A and this becomes equation number B. So now we are going to write them down in our matrix form. So now just pay attention here. Now this is my first term and this is my second term. Similarly, IL becomes my first term and VC becomes my second term. So keeping in mind over this A equation, I'm going to write down the first row elements of my this equation from here, right? So IL, the coefficient of IL is minus R upon L and the coefficient of VC is minus one upon L. So now coming on to your equation number B here. So the coefficient of IL is one upon C, while if you check out the coefficient of VC, it is zero here. So multiplying these with my IL and VC, that is my state variables here that we are just going to discuss. So this becomes my matrix equation from the directly from the circuit that we just took, just we discussed in the previous slide. So here just you see that from that circuit, we have directly got our this 
state equations and with the modern programming languages like matlab and uh, any other language it is very easy to solve our such type of equations than to directly go with the solving of the analytical uh, solving of your transfer functions so now we come on to our most important definition and that is of state variable so now we are going to correlate it with the electrical circuit that we just discussed so that it should be more clear to you so how we define state variables is that these are the smallest set of variables such that the knowledge of these variables at t equals to t not with knowledge of input for t greater than equal to t not completely determines the behavior of the system for any time t greater than t not so this is the theoretical definition that we have to always write in the examinations but if you want to correlate it and understand it in a better way you just correlate it that in the previous example we just discussed about your il that was the current that was flowing in the circuit so if i just take it as il0 you all know what is it it is the initial condition initial current in the inductor right and if i again take like vc0 so it again becomes the initial value so when we are talking about our this thing t equals to t not and when we are talking about that what is the initial values here so when we are having our knowledge of these two then what we also need to know is that if we want to have the knowledge of ilt and our vct then with this we can always find out the state of the system at any time t greater than t not so when we are talking about our state variables these two that we defined in the previous example are the state variables by when we know the value of these two we can know the state of the system at any time t greater than t not so now if we want to define our state vector so depending upon that how many variables we require to define the state of the system like here there are two variables that we require to define the state of the system so these becomes the elements of a state vector that means when we are defining our il and vc they become the that matrix becomes the state vector to define the state of that particular system so after this we are going to go for a, a small numerical to know what do we mean by the state space so let me just clear this and now we come on to a small example so that it should be clear that what is state space so let's take a simple example d cube y by dt cube plus 6 d square y by dt square plus 11 dy by dt plus 10 y equating it to 8 ut so now what we have to do is we have to write down the state space representation we have to go for what we have to go for the state space representation of our this equation and how you have to go for this is just as we did it for the electrical circuit that we just discussed now you have to go with this is cube just mind out that there is cube here so just take this as x3 dot then with the square one just take it as x2 dot then the single power take it as x1 dot and here a simple y take it as x1 right so now we are going to define our matrices so x1 dot what we have taken x1 dot as because now this is just let me write it down here that this is my dy by dx so my x2 dot is d square y by dx square and similarly my x3 dot is d cube y by dt cube can we also write it as x2 
because if we are going to take the derivative of x2, so this is simply x2. If x2 is my dy by dx, and if we are taking again the derivative of dx2 by dt at this side, so it is going to become d square y by dx square. So this is nothing but it can be written as x2 dot because the derivative term is always replaced with a dot here. The derivative term is replaced with the dot on the top of that variable. So this becomes x2 dot is equals to this thing. So simple x2 will be equal to dy by dx. Similarly, I'm going to replace here with x3. And now we have to find the value of our this thing. So first we have to replace our equation with x2 and x3 in our this given equation. So let's do that. So I'm just going to replace the terms here that we just took. So this is 6x2 dot plus 11x1 dot plus x1 equals to 8 into ut. I'm not changing ut. I'm keeping it as such. So now I'm going to keep my x3 dot here and I'm going to take my all these terms towards RHS side. So what I'm going to get is minus x1. Sorry, this is 10. Here I just missed 10 here. So let me write it down again. So this becomes minus 10 x1 minus 11 x1 dot minus 6 x2 dot plus 8 ut. And now let me rub my this equation here and just replace my x1 dot and x2 dot with the notations we have just taken so that we have got the complete set of the equations here. So x1 dot we just took it as x2 and x2 dot we took as x3, right? So now we have to write down the state equation. So here you can see that I can write it as x1 dot, x2 dot and x3 dot here. Now just see here that x1 term is zero here and so is the x3 term. So I have got only the x2 term here. So it will be zero, one and zero here. Similarly, when we go for here, there is no x1 and x2 term. They both are zero here. So I am going to, so I am going to write here So here it will be zero, zero over here and one because the coefficient of x3 is one. So now you have to write it very carefully here, right? So how you are going to write it down? Now you have to replace your these terms with the terms that we have just taken here. So your x1 dot is equal to x2 while your this x2 dot is equal to x3. So now you have to write down the coefficients here. So the first coefficient is minus 10, then is minus 11, and then is minus six over here, right? So I'm just going to rub my this line here so that you can see correctly the equation. So I'm just rubbing down the starting portion. And this becomes my state vector that I have just taken. And now just see why I have ha added this plus sign here because here another term of input is there. If you just check the equations, the equation of x1 dot was having no in, uh, input term u. So it will be zero here. Similarly, a zero over here, but a eight over here. And this will be multiplied by the input term that is given in the equation. So that means the equation that we were given, we have just replaced it with its state space representation. So the equation that we discussed has the state space representation that can be written as this. 
so when we are talking about our like we discussed before also that it is n dimensional so when you are going to be asked that how many dimensional it is so you will be writing that it is three dimensional st state space because there are the three variables that are used here to define the state of that system so thank you so much for this